joy right here like him. Just rejoicing in him. And all that he's done for us. Thank you, Lord. I want to read this uh, verse about the birth of Christ in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. And this is really his sermon is about um, what he's done, done for us. In Matthew 1, chapter 18, it says, Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found to be pregnant with, by the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, since he was a righteous man, did not want disgrace to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had thought this over, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place so that it was spoken by the Lord through the prophet who would be fulfilled. Behold, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. And I want to focus that for the, what they, uh, this verse says, the purpose for his coming. And it says, you shall name him Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And that's what he was sent to do, to save us from our sins and God sent him for that purpose. And to, to bring salvation to us, that was what he came here for. But you know what? It's kind of, I think there's no accident that the, that the very next couple verses go right along with that. And it says, Now all this took place so that it was spoken by the Lord through the prophet would be fulfilled. Behold, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. So, to understand that is to understand that not only did he initially save us from our sins, he saved us from, from the punishment of God's wrath, which is basically hell and death and eternal separation from God. He saved us from that, but he also says... I'm with you, and I will always be with you. He is the God with us, and that's why he said name, he's named Emmanuel. That was a prophecy from Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. And so he saves us, and he stays with us. He remains with us and continues with us all of our days. And that is... That is to work out that salvation inside of us. <laughs> he works that salvation inside of us all of our lives. You know, I always think of a uh, of a um, something Sandy told me a long, long time ago. It's one of those Sandy's things that stick in you forever and ever, <laughs> <laughs> that just never go away. One of those things that she said that from the Lord, and she said that um, salvation is progressive it's like this we are saved we are being saved and we shall be saved and that explains to us that salvation it's just not that he does he does that right at the beginning when we come to him and we receive him into our lives but it's a it's progressive throughout our lives so he just doesn't save us he puts us in this you could call it a state of grace, some people call it. It's a state of being. It's your whole life gets put into a different place. A place of citizenship with God in His kingdom. It's that state of grace you're in all of your lives. And now he, he doesn't just initially save you. All through your life, He saves you. You're being saved. Amen. And in the end... You shall be saved. Amen. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Mm -hmm. That what he's and it, you know, there's all through the scriptures supports that. The scripture in Hebrews chapter twelve, verse two, that he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. 
He is the author. He starts it. And whatever he starts in you, that good work that he starts in you, he brings it to completion. And all of your life, Amen. he works that out inside of you. He works inside of you all of your life till he gets you to that place. Right? Till he gets you to the end. Right? It's continual. It's ongoing. It's progressive in your life. Initially, yes, you are securing Him. Right? You are securing Him. And nobody can snatch you out of His hands. Amen. But all of your life, He works that out in your life. He works in your life, all of your life. You know that? And it, you know, one of the, my scriptures that, that speaks about this is, it says in Hebrews, that He writes His law upon your heart. Right? He writes his law upon your heart. Now what happened when you came to him initially and you received him for the first time? Didn't your whole perspective on life change? Yes. yes. You saw everything in life different when he resaved you. When he rescued you and he redeemed you. You saw all of life different. You saw people around you different. You know that? It was incredible what had happened to me. I saw the, the people that I associated different. I saw how they were lost. But just days before, I was lost too. You know? I had no judgment for them. I had pity on them. Because I was able to see, yes, I was in that state, and they're still there. And there becomes a compulsion inside of you that you want to tell them, right? You want to tell them, look where you are. And God can save you from it. And so he works that salvation all of our lives. And it's miraculous. It's a miracle. It can only be done by him. No human can do that inside of you. No human can help, can, can bring that transfer, transformation in your life. No psychologist can, can transform your soul like that. You know that? Only by the power of God. And it's a miracle in each side, inside every one of us. I can tell you unequivocally and without doubt, every one of you are a product of a miracle. Every one of you are a miracle of God that sit here. You are a miracle sitting here. A miracle to the testimony and the power of God, what only He can do. Amen. Right? You know, it says in Isaiah, chapter 63, verse 1, it's, this is what it says of him, speaking of Christ. Who is this who comes from Edom with garments of, gl of glowing colors from Bozrah? I don't know if that's right. But this is one who is majestic in his apparel, marching in the greatness of his strength. It is I, the one who speaks in righteousness, mighty to save. And that describes him. He is mighty to save. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know that? Yeah. He is mighty to save. He has the power to save you through and through. And not only does his power save you initially on the day that you call upon his name and you come to him and receive him as Lord, all of your life he keeps you. It is that same power that keeps you right to the end and transforms your life and makes you a new creation in Christ. Right? Isn't that what it says? First yeah. Corinthians 5. Mm -hmm. You become a new creation in Christ. You become a new being. He so co completely transforms you. You're a, you're a completely different creature. Right? Only he can do that. Only he can do that. And he does do it. Amen. And he carries that on to the end all throughout your life. You are, you are a testimony to his power and glory. That's who you are. That's what you are. You're amazing. You are a true, you are a miracle sitting there of him. He is mighty to save. Mighty to save. He has all the power and the strength and the ability to do it. 
not just initially, but take you right to the end, into glory. Yeah. And only He can do that. No more could you save yourself than you can keep yourself. It is Him who works in you salvation. And He will do it because He's faithful to do it. Because He finished what's he, what He starts. Just like Paul said to Philipp, in Philippians 1.6, He who began, a, I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know what that he's saying there? What I start, I finish. The good work that I started in you, I'm going to bring it to full completion in you until the day of Christ Jesus, until the very end. He does that. Because he's the faithful God. He's the faithful God. So all of your life he works this work of salvation in you. Right to the end. Carries you to the end. Isn't that wonderful mm -hmm. that he does that? That he's so faithful? Mm -hmm. It seems like we're determined to screw it up all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all the time. Yes. But you know what? He doesn't give up. He never gives up. He, carried, he takes you right to the end takes you right to the end. And you are that testimony of his ongoing work in your life. And I want to read a um, I want to read a, a passage from uh, a book from Charles Spurgeon. So Charles Spurgeon was a, was a uh, uh, pastor in the 1700s, 1800s um, that um, probably one of the greatest He's called probably one of the greatest preachers in history. Uh, but um, this is what he said in a sermon. He says, I have, met, I have many a time had doubts and fears, as most of you have had. And where is the strong believer that has not had sometimes wavered? He's saying, who among you has not wavered in fear? And certainly not me. And he said, I have said within myself, is this religion true, which day after day I incessantly preach to the people? Is this, is this the correct one? Is it true that this religion has an influence upon mankind? And I will tell you how I have reassured myself. I have looked upon the hundreds, nay, upon the thousands, whom I have around me, who were once the vilest of vile, the drunkards, the swearers, the and such like. And now I see them clothed and in their right mind, walking in holiness in the fear of God. I have said within myself, this must be the truth then, because I see this marvelous effect. And that's right. You see that? You are that testimony of God. You know, before I came to him, yes, I was the vilest of the vilest. And people who knew me then and know me now would say, this completely different person. I was completely self-centered, selfish, consumed with everything that was contrary to him. I drove my mother crazy. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> No, not that you drove me crazy, but yeah. I drove my mother crazy. <laughs> I understand, yes. I drove her to the point where she cast me out of the house. But you know what? God transformed me by a miracle. And only he could have done it. And he told me I had to go see my brother, who was a pastor at the time. And uh, even on the way there, I can tell you, my very thoughts were, I am not becoming a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said, I am not doing this. I want to live my own life. And that's what was in my heart. I wanted to do what I wanted to do. But you know what? And that one night, as I spoke to him, he spoke to me. My heart changed. By the power of God, by the power of God, God's, the Holy Spirit's influence on my heart so completely turned me around 
It was only by him. And I saw the world different. And I saw myself different. And I saw God different. I saw the God of love and God of mercy that sincerely cared for me. And I know every one of you have that testimony inside your lives of what he can do and what he has done. He is great and mighty to save. And from that day to this, you could say as, as well as I, he never leaves you, right? He's never left you. Amen. He sticks with you right to the end every day. Even days when you just make a mess of everything. <laughs> and you sin. Yes, he is still there. You know what? And in his faithfulness, he might give you a whooping. But you know what? Thank God. Thank God for his discipline too and his correction. Because that is part of his work of salvation in your life. It is his goodness that he loves us enough to correct us when we're going the wrong way and the shepherd goes after us. He has to throw that staff and knock our legs out from underneath us. That's what he does. Boy, thank God for that. But you know what? He never takes his eyes off of us. Never stops. Never changes. Never leaves. Because he is perfect. He is perfect in his faithfulness. Isn't he? He is, he is the God with us. He is the God with us. Well, we're going to do communion today, and I want to read the verse that talks about that. And this really says it too, about how He is with us, and He will always be with us. Matthew chapter 26, verse 26. And they were eating, and Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And what he says, I want to look at two words there. He says, This is my blood of the new covenant. The covenant is that contract with him. Covenant is, that's another word for con covenant. It's a contract. It's his, it's, it's his binding commitment to you, to hold on to you, that you and him are together. That he will not leave you, that he will not break his contract to you. Hallelujah. You know that? That he does not break that. He will not break that. He makes that contract with you. It's the, it's the blood contract. Right? And it's for the remission of sins. I looked remission up, the definition in, in the scriptures. It is the forgiveness of sins, but it is also the deliverance from sins. It is the deliverance from, and that's what he did, so did. He delivered you from the power of that sin. Not just forgiveness from the sins, but delivered you from the power of sin so that you do not have to obey it. That you, it does not have to rule and ruin your life and destroy you like it's doing to the rest of the world out there. Amen. You know that? It's His power. And with that, I'd like to take up the communion. And there's a verse in Luke that also says, he also said, do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. Remember what he, and that's what you should always do. Remember what he's done for you. Remember what he's done in you and through you.